So WBON TV is a special Halloween treat for you guys. We got to speak to Grant Wilson, formerly of TAPS and Ghost Hunters, who came to the historic Irvin McDowell House here in downtown Richmond. To tell us all about his paranormal activity that he's seen in the past and what he's up to now. Get everything you want, when you want it, and where you want it on any mobile or digital device and viewable screen, including that big screen in your living room. Get it on the go, at night, or wherever you want it, 24-7, WBONTV.com. Learn it, love it, use it. About the age of 15, I started having some weird experiences happen to me in my life, and that led me down this road of investigating the paranormal. And I found that um, a lot of people were nervous to live in their homes, and I could exchange information and comfort for exposure to the paranormal by helping people on their homes. So I did that for a while, and then all of a sudden, people caught wind of it, and we did this big show called Ghost Hunters on Sci-Fi. And uh, I left that show in season eight. I need to get back to my lovely wife and three kids and uh, back to investigating the way I liked to do it, where I could see it through to the end. Um, when the show ended, or when I left the show, I knew that I didn't want to stay in Rhode Island. I wanted to go somewhere else. And uh, we looked all over the world. And for some reason, Richmond, Kentucky was where it's at. And I love it here. So you guys have enjoyed it. You've been here, you said, for a few years now. Yeah, I've been here for about four years, going on five now. Um, we came down to check it out and toured the schools with our kids and things and uh, did some investigating and we fell in love with it. We put an offer in on a house and moved immediately and our kids were super excited to move. They came and attended the high schools here and, and the elementary schools and, and uh, they loved it. It was the best thing we could have ever done. Well, when you've been in the paranormal for as long as I have, I've been doing it for 28 years, um, you see a lot of strange things, and I'm not quick to say that it's, it's a ghost every time. I'm always looking for uh, another alternative reason. Um, and 80% of the time I can disprove the claims that people give me, but the other 20% is just stuff I don't understand yet. Um, it's a science in its infancy. So I am a skeptic. Um, I've certainly had more than my fair share of experiences. I've been hit, grabbed, slab, pushed by things that you can't see. Um, but I want to have authentic experiences. My quest is not to find evidence of the paranormal, it's to find the truth about what's happening to someone in their home and comfort them uh, with that truth. And you said you like doing investigations on a smaller scale, more personal scale, and that was what kind of led you back to your roots after the show? Yeah, um, so on Ghost Hunters, uh, they, we investigated people's homes, but then as the show got more popular, that was harder to do, and we started investigating places like Alcatraz and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Um, and that didn't have as much appeal to me. Um, I like coming into someone's home and calming them down and boiling the paranormal down to a pill they can swallow. And more often than not, it's not paranormal at all. It's just Hollywood or the religion has taught them to expect certain things of this activity, and that's not necessarily the case. So was there ever a case where you settled it for someone and just felt like, in your heart, I did the right thing, this was, from start to finish, this investigation ended the way it should? More often than not, an investigation ends with someone feeling comforted and at least uh, able to live with it if they can't get rid of it. Um, and that's, that's, where it, that's what it's all about to me. In fact, we had a case in New York where we actually solved a 60-year-old missing person case with what we call an EVP, or a voice that we caught on a recorder. Um, it kept telling us this woman's name, and we found her grandfather's, uh, the homeowner's grandfather's journal, and uh, it listed, he was involved in organized crime, and it listed his misdeeds, and one of the people in that book was his mistress, she got pregnant, and he threw her in a well in the basement and covered it up. And because of that name, we were able to get the police there and, and solve that missing person case. As far as the show, Jay and I, when we started TAPS, we were always kind of uh, looking to shake up the field. Um, people at that time were charging money to go on their website and look at pictures of dust, claiming they were ghosts. And so we shut that stuff down and made some waves in the industry and got a lot of attention that way. Jay and I weren't too excited about doing the show. The original pitch was that someone was going to, uh, actors were going to portray us based on uh, the cases we had. Um, and then as we were pitching it, the producers said, you know, no one's going to care about this unless it's real. And that's when we put up all our, our walls and our red flags. We said, no, 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 we don't, <laughs> we don't want to expose this side of our life because it wasn't cool back then. Now it is. I don't get it. And we actually turned down the show about five times. And then uh, the gentleman who was helping us, he said, look, if you don't do it, 
someone else is, the idea is out there, and how are they going to represent the field? And at that point, not a lot of people were representing it right. So we said, ah, we'll do 10 episodes and be done. And here we are a decade later or so. <laughs> and, uh, like eight seasons, right? At least. It actually went, I was on it for eight seasons. It went on uh, for like another three. It just, it just kept going, yeah. Well, maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like there weren't many shows back at the time. I feel like you guys kind of paved the way. Right. Uh, we were th the first of this type of show. I feel that uh, through Ghost Hunters and Taps and my whole career that, that uh, we've done a lot to open people's minds. And obviously, much more people are talking about the paranormal now, uh, which is I'm super grateful for. That was one of the goals, getting into it. What I didn't expect was the boom of groups out there. Uh, that started, I mean, there were just groups on top of groups, and they didn't really know what they were doing, and that terrified me for them and the people they're offering advice to. So we started teaching classes. We offered classes um, about five to eight hours, and it, it was designed to scare you away from it. And if you still wanted to do it, then fine, you're cut out for it, you know. So Kentucky was always very warm and inviting, and I think that's kind of sat with me and rose up when I thought, was thinking about moving here. But um, uh, Waverly Hills is phenomenal. Uh, it is one of the most active places I've ever seen. Every floor is like a, like a different type of activity. Um, and then we did Bobby Mackey's, which we didn't have too much there. That case was more about fixing the rumors and the legends that people had and trying to, to really boil that down. Did you ever feel like, I know with Bobby Mackey's there's that satanic demonic aspect of it. Did you ever feel like at some point, like, okay, I'm kind of in over my head with this stuff, like, or did you just roll with it? No, well, when it comes to the demonic, I like to use negative um, activity. I've experienced that many times. I know how to handle it. Um, I've dealt with it. Uh, Bobby Mackey's absolutely did not have any of that going on there. Um, that's just fear and lack of knowledge that produces that conclusion for people. Oh, we also checked out the Buffalo Trace oh, distillery, yeah. Yeah, we spent uh, some time at the Buffalo Trace Distillery, which I've since gone back to several times. Um, and yeah, that was an interesting, uh, interesting bit. Uh, I've, that's when I learned Kentucky's very welcoming when uh, Jay and I both got goosed on different floors. So, welcome to Kentucky. Did they <laughs> shove a bunch of bourbon on you and say, all right, run loose in the distillery? No, but we went into, uh, at, at Buffalo Trace, we went into the bottling room where you know, they actually fill the bottles and cap them up. You couldn't be in there for more than 10 or 15 minutes before you start to get like a contact high from that place. Just the, it's so steep with bourbon that you start to get dizzy and everything. So uh, before Ghost kind of took over my life, I was an artist ever since I could hold a pencil and I've been playing games. I'm a big geek, you wouldn't know. Um, and uh, um, I teamed up with my friend Mike Ritchie uh, a few years ago and we started a board game company. He's a brilliant game designer. And so combining our different talents, we made this company. We're making three games at least a year ourselves and, and, and cranking it out. And they're tons of fun, uh, very family-friendly games, less than an, five minutes to learn, less than an hour to play. And it's called uh, Rather Dashing Games. I feel the most sense of accomplishment when I leave someone better off than when I found them. And one way to do that, my favorite way, is through creativity, through writing books, writing music, making board games. Um, and uh, paranormal investigation, you know? Just being creative is what makes me happy. All right, so final question. What are your Halloween plans? <laughs> <laughs> well, being on Ghost Hunters, they would always do these live Halloween episodes, right? And I have three kids. And so on Halloween, instead of trick-or-treating my, my kids, I was filming these shows. So now that I'm not filming anymore, my Halloween plans are simple. I get dressed up in a costume. My wife and I are going to be Mary Poppins and Burt. Uh, the chimney sweep, and we're going to trick-or-treat with our kids. Yeah. Looks like there's a lot of paranormal activity, both past and present, here in Richmond. Happy Halloween from all of us at WBON-TV. I'm Marissa Hempel.